we started our conversation about uh, classifiers and uh, we're about to uh, do a little bit of demonstration in this area. But first I wanted to take a moment and talk about uh, the infant data that we're going to be working with. To date, we've worked with a relatively tiny uh, data set. The new data set that we're going to load up will have a lot more uh, information about what's going on with the infant as well as with the robot. So in particular, not only do we have the left and right wrists of the infant, but we also have uh, shoulders, we have uh, knees and ankles and toes and things like that. So, so position X, Y, Z of all of those dimensions. And we also have data about the, the robot. And in particular, what we're going to uh, focus on uh, in this analysis is uh, information about how the robot is currently assisting the infant uh, during a, a lot, the live session. So in particular, there is a, an assistance action column that you uh, will be able to see. This is a categorical variable that is encoded using an integer. So, so even, even though we have integer values, uh, the, uh, the meaning of two values being next to each other uh, in the list uh, is, is really irrelevant. A, an integer value of zero uh, corresponds to no assistance uh, by the robot, and uh, a value of one corresponds to uh, the, the fact that the robot is currently moving the infant forward, and, 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 in, and, and the movement has been triggered by a power steering event. If you recall, uh, we have this distinction between power steering and gesture uh, type events. In this particular case of power, of power steering, the infant has pushed a little bit against the ground in the forward direction, and then the robot responds by moving for about a second uh, uh, forward. Uh, of course, the robot is moving forward, but the robot is also carrying the infant uh, forward. A value of two corresponds to the robot moving backwards, and three and four correspond to movements to the left and to the right. Uh, five through eight are triggered by uh, gestures. So, uh, so here the, the robotic system is looking at the motion capture data in real time, and it's making a judgment uh, that uh, the infant appears to be trying to uh, attempt a, a, a forward uh, locomotion uh, movement and the robot responds to this recognition event by carrying the infant forward. Six corresponds to backwards and seven and eight correspond to left and right. We'll, we'll uh, do a little bit of pre-processing of the data. So in particular, we've already talked about computing velocities. So we'll apply those uh, tools that we've already developed. And, and then as a last step, we'll drop all of the samples that contain not a numbers uh, within the, uh, somewhere within the data. So if any one of the sensors has dropped out, we'll, we'll drop it. Uh, in, the, in the long run, we might do linear interpolation uh, to fill in those not a numbers. In this case, I, I'm just dropping them from the data set. So the, the first prediction problem that we're going to be setting ourselves up for is one that uh, in which the classifier gets access to the position and velocity of all points on the body. And, and then, it's, then we're going to predict whether or not the robot is providing assistance. And in this case, uh, the way we can tell that is by asking the question of whether or not the action type is uh, either uh, zero or positive. If it's, if it's positive, then some assistance is being provided. So we'll look at uh, some other prediction problems along the way. Uh, but this is the first one we're going to, to try out. So th there's a lot of code up front uh, that I already have typed in here. Uh, it is also available as part of our Git repository. Just go looking for the, the uh, classifiers dash scale uh, notebook, scale uh, standing for skeleton. Uh, the first piece here, of course, is all of our standard uh, Im imports uh, of various uh, packages that we're going to be using, plus setting up some variables for uh, for visualization. Uh, one thing that I haven't demonstrated to you yet is that you can 
set up default parameters in Matplotlib. In this particular case, I'm setting the X and Y tick label size to, uh, to a font size of 24. So I'll execute that. The next block, uh, you've already seen two of the three uh, pieces here. We're defining three different classes that we're using as part of our pipelines uh, for the pre-processing step. You've already seen the data frame selector, that's in your book, and we also talked about it earlier. Uh, we also derived the uh, compute derivative class. Uh, so that's all about computing our velocities. The, the new one here is uh, the data sample dropper. This is the thing that's going to drop uh, all of our rows that have some, not a number, somewhere in, in the rows. Uh, I'm, the, we don't need to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, the, uh, the constructor does not do anything. Likewise, the, the, the fit method does the standard thing of returning self, uh, and there's nothing to fit in this case. And then the transform uh, method, what it does is it uh, takes the data frame object, it calls drop NA, uh, and with this particular parameter, uh, what this says is give me a new data frame in, in which uh, we have still all the same columns, but we only keep the rows that do not have not a numbers hiding inside of them. Okay, so that's, those are our pipeline elements. I'll execute that. Uh, I'm also providing you with a, a couple of methods that help us uh, pull some information out to do a little bit of introspection about your, uh, about the data frames. Uh, this first one uh, takes as input a data frame and it returns a list of strings that correspond to kinematic data. And uh, the, the key here is that we're applying, we're, we're doing regular expression-based uh, comparisons. Um, essentially what we're going to do is loop through uh, all of the fields that are hiding within the data frame and look for those that uh, have at the very end of the field name an underscore and then either an X, a Y, or a Z. So, so this is what that regular expression is uh, looking for. Um, the dollar sign here says that it must match the end of the string. It can't match anywhere uh, within the string. Uh, so, so here's our for loop that's uh, encoded in a, a list comprehension uh, mechanism. So we're iterating over all of the fields in the data frame and we're including the field name only if that uh, it, within that field name, this string occurs. So, so again, if we see a underscore X, underscore Y, or underscore Z, and then we get, it returns that list of strings. This other method uh, takes as input a list of strings and uh, prepends to each one of the strings a by default a d underscore and then it combines the two strings together so this is going to allow us to go from a list of our of our position variables and the return is a list of, that contains both position variables and velocity variables okay so that's uh, that's the last big piece that I've given you in uh, in, in code. The, the last piece here is just loading up the particular data set that we're going to be working with. Exactly where it lives in your file system might vary a little bit, so you, so you might need to make an adjustment here. And in my case, it's just one level up in the directory hierarchy. So let me load that up. And of course, the first thing we want to do is look at uh, what is hiding inside of this data set. So there we go. And you'll notice that now we have 43 columns. So there's our left and right wrist, but we also have uh, elbow and uh, there are a bunch of elements that aren't listed here, but you also have uh, left foot, uh, upper back, uh, and then you also have some robot velocity uh, columns. And there's that, that action column. Uh, it is named SIPSI action uh, inside of this particular data set. Okay, so, so let's look at that SIPSI action. So let me extract 
out uh, time. We'll extract those two things and let's build a figure. And we're going to look just at the first 50 seconds here. And there's, there's our plot there. So, so you'll notice uh, most of, of all of the categories, uh, zero is the most frequent. This is again, the case where the robot is not providing assistance. I don't see any ones in this range here, but there, here's a, a two that corresponds to a backward motion that is triggered by the, uh, by, by the power steering mechanism. So right at this instant in time uh, here, the trigger happens and then the robot carries the infant backwards for some uh, period of time and then the, the robot stops at, at the end of, uh, of, of this uh, uh, bump here. Let's see, three is left. There aren't any threes, but there are. there is one right here in this period. And then uh, five, six, seven, and eight correspond to forward, backwards, left, and right, respectively of the, uh, for, for the gesture-based uh, assistance. So there's a, a forward motion, there's a, a backwards motion, there's a left one and a right one. So, so again, even though we're using integers here, the, these are, this is a categorical variable. So uh, a five, uh, a four versus a five, those are near each other numerically, but, uh, but one encodes power steering right and the other encodes gesture forward. And there's no real notion of uh, distance here. So, so that, that's one thing that we'll want to be cautious of uh, as we move forward in some of our processing. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull out our, our kinematic fields. And this is the function that we defined above. I'm going to hand that the infant data data frame. Uh, and then we also need fields. We're going to get kinematic and velocity data here. Okay, so that takes as input our list of position uh, fields and it gives us back a list of position and velocity fields. And so let's go ahead and execute that. And here is the list of uh, position fields. So a fairly sizable list. And we can also look at uh, Kinvel here. And there's our list of position and velocity. So the first part are all positions. And then you'll notice at the bottom, uh, we have our uh, velocity uh, terms here. Okay, so let's go ahead and create our pipelines for processing this data. I'm actually going to do two stages of pipelines. Uh, the first stage is going to compute derivatives, and then it's going to drop the elements that contain not a number. Uh, and then we're going to do another stage where we select the fields that we actually need for various uh, pieces of our, uh, of our processing that we're doing. So I'm going to call this first one pre-pipe. And this is a pipeline that has two pieces. One is a derivative. And that's going to take as input uh, our list of position features as well as uh, our DT parameter. And the other one is a dropper. And that is our data sample uh, dropper, and that takes no parameters. I 
I'm going to go ahead and create a, a few uh, extra uh, pipelines that are going to sit after this pre-pipe, uh, and we'll use those uh, as we go here. So the first one um, is just a pipeline of one uh, element here. This is, uh, this is going to be our selector, uh, and it's a data frame selector that just pulls out the position data. And uh, the next pipeline is going to, uh, this is position and velocity. And it's going to also select data, but it's going to select all of the columns that uh, include uh, position and velocity. So the new piece is right there. Uh, I'm also going to uh, pull out that robot action. We'll call this pipe label. And it is also a selector and it's going to extract attributes. Uh, I don't know why this is AVEL uh, label. And then we also want to pull out time. And I'll just make a copy of that. And I'm, I realize I'm kind of taking a, go, going a little bit the long way here, but what I'm trying to be is a little bit consistent here. So pipe time and attributes time. Okay. Oh, of course. Uh, oh, I'm missing a comma right here. Execute that. All right, so that is now happy. And uh, let's go ahead and do our transformation. So the first one is to clean up the data. So pre-pipe. And we're going to do a fit transform of our infant data. And that's going to give us back another data frame, we're going to call that infant data two. And then we'll have a selection stage where infant data two then gets routed to each of these other four pipelines that we've built. This form. Okay, so in this case, we're routing our infant data to, to each one of these other pipelines uh, to, uh, to pull out very specific uh, fields. Uh, remember that for this data frame selector, we're actually going from a data frame object to a NumPy array. So we're actually losing the column labels. We're, we will be left with just uh, numerical indexing there. Um, the other little bit that I've added here is that uh, this uh, the result of of executing uh, this transformation gives us a two dimensional array, a NumPy array, uh, and the first thing I'm doing is uh, reshaping that array to be a one dimensional uh, array, and that that turns out to be helpful later on down the line. So let's execute that. And now let's go about uh, creating class labels. So uh, I, I'm going to create uh, several. We're going to use a couple of them later, but I, I wanted to give you a, a sense of the, the, what's possible with these transformations here. So the first one that we talked about, sorry, we're going to, the first one that we talked about is this label uh, for just any sort of motion assistance. Um, so when we write things in this way, uh, this gets evaluated. Um, action is a one-dimensional 
uh, array, a NumPy array, and each element of that array gets tested against whether or not we have a zero. So, so in the end, we're going to end up with a true or a one uh, if we have uh, a, a positive action and we end up with a zero or a false if we uh, end up with a, a zero action. Also wanted to create several different labels that look at the just the onset of an action. So, so if you remember when action goes uh, up, uh, it stays high for a while. That's the duration that the robot is assisting the infant. But there are cases where we actually want to focus on just what's going on right at the, the time that the action choice has been made. And, and so what we're going to do is uh, create a little bit more complicated Boolean question here where we look at not just uh, the current action, but we look at the current action plus the next one coming. And uh, of course, we have to write this in a, a, vector, a vectorial form. So let's, um, so this is um, uh, action onset, and this is going to be any action. Okay, we're creating a, a Boolean test here that is uh, a little bit more complicated than we've just done. Um, what uh, remember with your indexing, what this uh, is going to do is it's going to, of the action vector, what it's going to do is take uh, all but the last element of the action vector. And so it's going to return, a, return to us a vector that's one smaller. Um, but the key is that it's including the, the very first element. The other two rules, part, parts of our expression here, they also create a vector that's one smaller. Uh, but in both of these cases, we're skipping the, the zeroth element and starting with the one element. Uh, and what this is going to allow us to do is line up the, the current action with the action that is one step beyond the current action. So here we're asking, is the current action equal to zero? So no assistance has been happening. And here we're asking, actually, between both of these, we're, we're asking whether or not the next action is uh, greater than zero and less than or equal to eight. And if that's the case, then this is our definition of initiating a movement of any type. A couple of elements of uh, syntax here. Uh, the AND has higher precedence than, than these uh, comparison operators. So do make sure that you have uh, parentheses ar around each of the, these uh, comparison questions. Uh, and in Python, it is a single ampersand that uh, gives us the logical AND. Uh, whereas in something like C or Java, it's a, it's a double uh, ampersand. Okay, I'm also going to create two more that correspond to power steering and, and gesture. So remember power steering is one, two, three, four, and gesture is five, six, seven, eight. So let's, it's just a modification of this. So this is PS and it's still action starts at zero and then uh, action is greater than zero and less than or equal to four is our power steering. And onset of gesture again is current action is zero and then the next action is make this greater than or equal to uh, five, but less than or equal to eight. So that's five, six, seven, eight. Uh, it gives us left, right, forward, back. Okay, so I've executed that. And now let's visualize that really quickly. So I'm gonna look at our raw data but also look at a couple of our new labels. So 
I'm, I'm going to uh, look at label assistance onset PS power steering. So it's this one here. I'm going to drop that value down by two just to get it out of the way uh, of the other plots. We'll make that blue. And let's also plot uh, the motion labels. So this is any assistance. I'm going to drop that down by four in order to uh, keep it out of the way. And finally, let's look at just xlim. Let's look at just the first 50 milliseconds. All right, I, I went to execute this plotting uh, and uh, I end up with an error. The, the issue is that uh, time is one length and uh, say label assistance onset PS is, is a different length because we, uh, we chopped uh, this uh, list down by one. So we need to uh, fix that. So I'm just going to do a, uh, a NumPy append. And we're going to append onto the end a, uh, a zero. And I'm going to do that for the, all three of these. So this is uh, PS. This is gesture. Okay, so I'm going to re-execute that and, and then execute the, uh, the, the plotting. Okay, so now, now we have something that we can be looking at. Uh, so the red curve here, this is our original action variable. Uh, the green curve is uh, time periods where we have any action executing. And you'll see that anytime there's a lump here, no matter what the size is, uh, green, it's going from zero to one. Just remember that green was shifted down by four. Uh, and then the blue, this was, uh, for, for the blue curve, we are looking at label assistance onset for power steering which means we're trying to detect movements one, two, three, and four. And for this 50 millisecond period of time, uh, we actually only have three of those. So there's this one here, this one here, and this one here. Everything else is, falls in the range of five to eight. So those are power steering uh, um, motions. Um, but here you'll notice that we are indeed capturing the onset of uh, each of those three motions. Okay, so that's uh, the, the quick uh, introduction to pre-processing of this particular data set. And next up will be our, uh, our building of our classifiers.